Today on Animal Airport, the team fight for the survival of a neglected lemur. He's clearly in quite a lot of discomfort with his hands and feet. A husky is taken into quarantine, but it's needed to warn its epileptic owner if she's about to have a seizure. I mean, I can kind of feel it, but she'll know before I start feeling it. A young foal flies in, but she mustn't be separated from her mother. And an owner fears her elderly dog won't be home for Christmas. If they can't read the chip number and they can't find it, they're going to keep it for another three weeks. With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. As well as 65 million human passengers, each year, around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Centre, affectionately known as the Ark. It's early morning in the run-up to Christmas, and Karen is just back from the supermarket. There's no turkey, so you might think she's a vegetarian, but this isn't her Christmas dinner. We get uh, quite strange looks when we go out and buy shopping for the animals here. Along with tens of thousands of tins of pet food, each year the Ark gets through about a tonne of bananas, a thousand lettuces and countless carrots. This is just for tortoises, which are, there aren't many of them, and the levers. There are Madagascan ring-tailed lemurs at the Ark. This has been their home for the past two years, after they were taken by police from an owner who allegedly didn't have a licence to keep them. Lima, lima, lima. Bye, guys. Despite the confines of their quarters and perhaps because of their delicious diet, the adult female that first arrived here has since had oh, babies, increasing their number from three to six. When they came here, there was mummy, daddy and a daughter, and then they had another one, and then they've had the twins. So they've produced a nice, lovely family since they've been with us. The staff resist getting over-sentimental about the animals in their care, and they've still not given the lemurs names. But the length of their stay has seen most of the team grow affectionate towards them. They're thinking they're going to get some treaties. They made them. What started as an ordinary day could turn out to be quite extraordinary. There are rumours another ring-tailed lemur has been found roaming around Tooting, London. Coming over, someone's found a lemur somewhere. No one's reported it missing. Apparently, Tristan said someone's bringing it to us. Can you find out where it's come from? I think somebody phoned up saying it was escaped somewhere. Near London Zoo? Maybe they lost one. No, all the zoos have been found. Oh. So we know it's not from, um, from a, a zoo or um, private a, a private collection. In this, well, not registered <laughs> private collection. Yeah. I wondered if it was a wind up. Yeah. Is it? That's why I say wait until it gets here. You have to see it to believe it. Chris has no time to think about what might be happening later. He's out on the tarmac. Most animals arrive in the UK in the aircraft hold, but he's checking the paperwork on a dog that's travelled in the cabin with its owner. We get um, assistance dogs for uh, detecting seizures, things like that. We get owners as well which have anxiety, panic attacks, so having an animal with them will calm their nerves if they've got you know, problems with flying or things like that. Coming off a flight is guide dog Becky, along with her owner, Ragnarhild. Um, I'm going to have to check the paperwork first for the dog. Thank you very much. Uh, Last year, there, more than 80 assistance pets just, flew into the UK uh, in the cabin quick. of the aircraft. He's been travelling a lot. I see that. Yeah. Got a pretty full passport. Becky's paperwork is in she perfect helps. order. So Hi, all there, Chris Becky. has to do is check her microchip and she's free to go. Enjoy your stay. Have a good Christmas. All right. See Thank you very you. much, sir. Matt Ford's a regular at the Ark. He runs a specialist transportation service for exotic animals. He's heading into London to pick up what's become the talk of the Ark. We're off to the Blue Cross uh, Animal Hospital in Victoria. Um, we're going to collect a ring-tailed lemur that's been found romping around on uh, Tooting Common. 
it, it obviously wasn't very well um, because I think a member of the public actually picked it up um, and took it to them. Um, and as you know, lemurs aren't generally um, slow enough just for you to bend down and pick up. But when the lemur's desperate condition becomes apparent, excitement turns to anxiety. The lemur is still showing signs of hypothermia. Its injuries suggest it might have been attacked by another animal, and it's in shock. Here at the Blue Cross, we don't normally see um, things like this coming in at night. This is not something we see every day. It's like often once in a blue moon. Um, but we looked at it, we gave it fluids, treated it for shock, warmed it up, and um, got it back to the state it's in now, really, which Excellent. I think is, is, is fit to travel. It's well enough to move, and he's, so he's out of the danger zone as such. Matt's taking it back to the Ark, where it can be given round-the-clock care. At the Ark, Huskies Cody and Brenya have been detained after their flight in from the States. Because of the risk of rabies, they must be quarantined for at least two weeks at a cost of several hundred pounds. But it's not the expense that's upsetting Leia. Dogs can be specially trained to warn epileptic owners of the onset of a seizure. I mean, I can kind of feel it, but she'll know before I start feeling it, so... She'll find a part of my body, clothing, she'll grab onto it, and she'll try to get me down so I won't, like, fall or anything. And then she'll, um, she'll stay with me until it's over. Yeah, one of my um, friend's mum has epilepsy and her dog does the same thing. She knows when she's going to have an epileptic fit. It is amazing. It's been two weeks since Leia last saw her dogs. It'll be another two before she again has the reassurance of Brenya at her side. For some owners, even waiting a matter of minutes for their dogs is all but unbearable. American Starlet Golden is one of them. Yeah, I have three dogs. Um, they're all mixes. There's uh, Contra, he's a Chow German Shepherd mix. Then there's Wookie, which is a Schnauzer Yorkie mix. Then there's Attitude, which is a Welch Corky Jack Russell mix. It's been a full week since I've seen them, so I'm, I'm getting kind of antsy. I want my puppies. <laughs> They're my Christmas present right now. Just being able to get my dogs and have them with me will be Christmas for me. The dogs are cleared to leave, and there's an enthusiastic reunion in prospect. Though usually it's the dogs, not the owners, who can't control their emotions. The staff are always pleased to have a happy customer. Hysterical is another matter. If only they could stop Starlet Golden blocking reception. Yeah, we got another dog coming through oh. here, so no. <laughs> I haven't seen him for a whole week. Yeah. Having him back is just like having my family back together. They get their own Christmas stockings, they get their own toys. So I think they'll, they'll enjoy Christmas just as much as we will. Merry Christmas! Thank you very much. I got one. In the loading bay, Matt Ford arrives with the sick Lima. Deputy Manager Susie is immediately concerned. Next in a really tree, he's got um, quite a lot of damage to his hands. He's got a lot of swelling and uh, what looks like broken fingers. His tail's very matted, he's not moving properly, he's not with it at all, really. If we can keep him warm and get him hydrated, um, We'll be able to see whether we can sort out those injuries, but I think we really doubt it. Each hour could be critical to its survival. It's early evening at the Ark. Susie's about to brief some of the rest of the team on the intensive care programme the lemur will need throughout the night. He's not in pain, but obviously his welfare vet is very poor, he's emaciated, he's very weak. It really needs to be on 40 mils every three hours, right, okay, which is okay. four of those big syringes. Yeah. Okay. And I need to know exactly how much fluid it's had. He's probably only got a 20% good prognosis. It's quite sad to kind of see him 
kind of all curled up and really poorly, really. Just put starting in. He doesn't look very well. And you look at the leaves that we've got here, and you look at him, and you can see the comparison. It's night and day. Every three hours, the lemur must be checked and given a special liquid feed to rehydrate it and boost its strength. But it's too weak to eat unaided and must be hand-fed by syringe. Even with this amount of care, the lemur's future is by no means certain. The Ark deals with around 12,000 dogs and cats every year, most heading to new homes across the world. But it's not just cats and dogs. Animal Health Officer Anne is checking on a tortoise. It's about to go on what's likely to be oh, the gross. longest, fastest journey of its life, from London to the United States. It's looking absolutely fine. His eyes are bright, he's got his eyes open. It is quite rare for us to have um, just one individual tortoise. Yeah. Deputy Manager Tristan checks its travel crate. It's got the air holes and it's got the space around it, so that's fine. Yeah, I'd suggest we um, put some shredded paper in here, um, just in case there's turbulence. Once securely packed, it's put in a flight box. Like many animals leaving the country, it's x-rayed to check it's not carrying anything explosive. Is he supposed to be bigger? Just a tiny little one. One small tortoise getting a lot of attention. The ARC staff have spent the last week caring day and night for the sick lemur, and the special food and medicine appear to be helping. It's one of the rare cases when Susie has allowed herself to become emotionally involved. Uh, we've got the vet coming any minute now uh, to come and assess the lemur. And today's the day we make a decision as to whether we're going to really carry on with this. Um, if he's made enough progress that we can really see that he is going to get better and, you know, be, have sort of really good welfare in the future. Um, or if we're going to call it a day. So it's going to be a difficult decision to make, but, um, yeah, it will be, it'll be sorted in a couple of hours one way or the other. Susie got involved with it from the very beginning, so it's perhaps what might have affected her more. I think most people are quite pragmatic about these things, so if the vet says something should be put down, they'll go along with it. Today, the lemur's fate hangs in the balance. Steve, the vet, will decide its future. First, he must remove the lemur from its cage. At least it now has enough strength to attempt to stay in the comfort of its box. He wants a little more space to check its vital signs and see how well it's able to move around. The examination is less stressful if fewer people are watching. The moment of reckoning. He's putting on weight, he's eating well, he's drinking well. I think what we've got to do is get him across to, instead of being hand-fed, yeah, or exactly. assist fed, absolutely. get him over yeah. to, to feeding and, he does and drinking bits. himself. Yeah. So if we were to um, carry on with the three hourly through the day, but with offering it to him, sort of putting the bowl in there, encouraging him, and then if he doesn't eat, then offering something on the spoon and that kind of thing, yeah. and then perhaps six hours overnight. Yeah. Because yeah, he's, he does look, he looks well. knackered in the night anyway. Yeah, well. <laughs> he's kind of like, oh, leave me alone already, yeah. <laughs> OK, I shall scribble down my report and make a note that I'm generally happy. It's a huge relief for Susie, but the vet will be back after Christmas. Bye-bye. I'm absolutely over the moon. I'm so relieved. It was, we were really um, uh, pessimistic about what the prognosis was going to be. Um, and I've just been so anxious about it because we've put so much time into him and the staff have been fantastic. So yeah, he just needs to start fending for himself a little bit more and um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant news. Karen is delivering the pet tortoise onto his flight to the USA. It's probably about the most unusual thing I've actually delivered myself. We don't really deliver reptiles or anything normally to the planes. They're normally coming in. By the time the tortoise has completed his journey, he'll have clocked up more than 3,000 air miles. 
and a lot of in-flight catering. It probably likes its own particular food and has its own particular habits. I'd imagine it's quite a, a, a sport little brat. In six and a half hours, the tortoise will be stateside Thank and you. on his way to a new home. It's tiny, it's only about this big. Every year, thousands of cats and dogs arrive at Heathrow. Each must have a pet passport and a readable microchip underneath its skin. No microchip. Big problem. It seems this is just what's happened to two passengers from Larnaca, Cyprus. Their dog appears to be missing his microchip. To be honest, they do sometimes go wrong, and so sometimes there's an error in there. Um, I'll go over again for them now and just try and try again, OK? Chips are meant to be put right between the shoulder blades here, just under the skin, but they have been known to, to migrate a little bit around the body. I think that this chip's probably been damaged in there. Anne has to tell the owners. Yeah, we check absolutely check everything. And one of the chip readers that we've got is, is really sensitive, and we can use it sometimes even through boxes. It will pick up yeah, a chip you. number. So it is a really oh, sensitive you, sort of little machine. Yeah. So what, what do I have to do? She no, can't be released well, at yeah, all? Yeah, she's under quarantine until we can read the chip. I hope she's going to be able to cope with it, because it's an old dog. It's not a, a, a young dog, and that's what I'm worried about. If Nana needs a new chip, she'll have to spend Christmas in quarantine. Yay. Outside the Ark stable yard, some regular visitors are waiting for an especially large consignment of animals they've flown in from Dubai. Susie goes to supervise their arrival. Racehorses regularly cross continents, sometimes just for a single race. They are the VIPs of the animal airport with a retinue of attendants, and Kim's very much in charge. This is where the fun starts and the general manhandling of the equipment. <laughs> for her, this is an everyday occurrence, so it's a slick operation. Horses travel in the hold of aircraft in specially adapted cargo crates. Among the nine horses tonight, one very unusual traveller, a six-month-old foal flying with its mother because it's still sucking. The two can't be split up. Passengers just like these get personal service from sky grooms who travel in the hold with them. Uh, we generally look after them, make sure uh, the water the hayed, um, they don't get sick, we're there if any problems occur. Oh, we don't often see uh, mares and foals, so it's quite nice to have one on here. If they're well handled and they're quite calm, then they're, they're, you know it, it isn't any different to travelling any other horse at all. It's just that this will be the first time it's ever flown. This is the Ranger. Checks completed. The horses can now be loaded for the last leg of their journey. Just the final paperwork and we're good to go. I'll give all the people a call to tell them that their horses have left and roughly what time they expect them in their yards. This shipment went smoothly, but inside the ark, Nana's owners wait anxiously while Anne tries once again to find the microchip. Don't try one last time, will you? Come, sweetheart. Oh, yay. Hi, and it's not there, is it? We can't find it. Sorry, mate. Bad news for Nana, and there's more. Her owners have also brought their cats from Cyprus, and there's another problem. My colleague just said to me that one of the in the passport, one of the cats um, for the rabies vaccine, they've not stamped the the vaccine. An urgent call to the vet is needed. Hi, and we've got another problem. On one of the cats, you never stamped for the rabies. Um, you signed it, but you didn't stamp it. Whose who's one it is? I've got Olivia on one. Mitzi. It's Mitzi's. She's going to email it to you, and you can stamp. Yeah, she could just and you can stamp, stamp it. it and then re, re and scan then, it in and send it back to me. Yeah. Okay, and then the cats can be released. Yeah. 
For once, it's not long before her cat's updated paperwork arrives. So, um, it's just to confirm that the vaccine for the rabies was done, and then she stamped and signed it, so that's, that's exactly what we needed. So that's good, so I'll take a photo of that. But with one problem solved, there's still the matter of Nana's missing microchip. Anne has no choice but to send Nana into quarantine. They would then put a new chip in her and just and then give her a rabies vaccine. Yeah. And then she'd just have to wait three weeks, 21 days from the vaccine date, and then she'd be able to, to leave. 21 days means Christmas without Nana. They leave with their cats, but the law prevents them even being allowed to see Nana before they go. Oopsie. Hello, sweetie. It's lovely, but I just, I'm, I'm just in a daze. I'm really upset about the dog. Nana will be in quarantine until the new year. Christmas Day at the Ark. Working the festive shift, Michelle and Anna. Christmas dinner in the oven. Before Christmas dinner, it's time to feed the sick lemur, which now has an open wound on its tail. You need to stop licking that, mister. I'm not laughing at you. The indications are mixed. He's more alert, but he's still not feeding himself, and he's refusing his regular lemur food. It smells nice. It's mango. You like mango? He's got more energy and is moving about, but it's of scant encouragement when he only accepts a little yoghurt from a spoon. Is that good, mate? With relatively few arrivals, there's time for a full Christmas lunch. Happy Christmas, darling. Happy Christmas. Cheers. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. The festivities are soon over. A new year brings bad news for the lemur. The improvement that it made in, in how, um, how well it was feeding on its own and its mobility was good, but it wasn't, at this stage, enough. He wouldn't eat of his own accord. He'd have to be hand-fed all the time. Um, and we never got him to a situation where he would be able to be reintroduced into a group situation. Also, he's got an injury on his tail tip, which has actually got the vertebrae of his tail exposed through the soft tissue. So to put him through a general anaesthetic for that, with no hope of rehoming him, was unfair on him. The vet came down and he euthanized it, which was sad but necessary, I think, in this case. And the way I feel about it is that now we know that there's nothing else bad that can possibly happen to that animal. Yeah. It's really sad, but um, I think in, you, we've got to consider the long-term um, welfare of, of the animal. Yeah. We've been looking up for him quite, you know, 24 7 really. Every few hours trying to get him to eat and drink and everything. It's, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, really. It's a sad moment for the team, but normal service must be resumed. Flights are due in from all around the world. There's another busy day ahead. For three dogs and their owners, there's good news. A joyful reunion for all. Nana the Cypress Poodle has been fitted with a new microchip. She couldn't be happier. And Cody and Brenya have been reunited with a very relieved owner. Cody is back on duty.